Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, 80s Move Full Force. Today, we'll be reviewing this season's UEFA Conference League Edition. So, like I said, guys, we'll be reviewing this season. So, I want to know what you guys think of this season as well. We'll talk about the final, we'll talk about the best games, best goals, we'll talk about the stats, we'll talk about everything, man. I even have a fun quiz for us to do. And you guys can also do it in the comments below, man. Like I said, man, please smash the like button, guys. I don't know what's been happening with my YouTube system. The YouTube has been removing likes for my videos for some reason. So, I will address it and send an email to them because this is kind of getting annoying to me. So um, I'll try to get that fixed for you guys. Don't worry. And like I said, guys, um, just just do your support, and I'll do everything I can to ensure the content is great. Let's talk about the final, guys. Let's talk about the final. So for me, West Ham, guys, the final came down to two performances, right? You could tell with Fiorentina is that as good as they were and as much possession as they had, they didn't really create much threatening opportunities, you know? And for West Ham, on the other hand, they were always in the game, you know? And you look at West Ham, individually speaking, they have a better players. And they play better. They have a better game plan, you know? Fiorentina might have the better possession. They may have the the better tactics, more positive approach. I, I wouldn't necessarily say West Ham were defensive in this game. I think they were just more, like, more efficient. I think that's a word I would say. Because West Ham knew when to push and knew when to sit back. Because there's a difference between efficient and being defensive, right? It wasn't like they attacked at all. It's not like they were super defensive for the game. They just were efficient with the opportunities to create. And you have to give a shout out to Emerson. The guy wasn't even supposed to start this final. It was supposed to be, um, I believe, Kufal. And the guy did a fantastic job. Sorry, I think Cresswell. No, no, no. Hold up, hold up. <laughs> Let me make sure, guys. I believe... You no, know, it's, it's Cresswell. It's Cresswell. You know, the fact he started this final and had a fantastic performance should be worth noting. The guy was fantastic. Zuma and Agurid were fantastic in the defense. I got to give a shout out to Paqueta again, that assist, you know, for that clutch assist. And then Jared Bowen, man, he won the penalty, scored the crucial goal. And then obviously um, Ben Rama as well, uh, you know, scoring that penalty. And for Fiorentina, man, the only real player that showed up for me was um, Amrabat. I know people say Bonaventaro had a good game and obviously Nico Gonzalez. My issue with that is that, yes, they may have good games, and yes, they got the goal that was necessary. They weren't really that great throughout the game, you know? And I feel like, for me, for Fiorentini, I meant only Amrabat showed up. And then, obviously, Luka Jovic had disaster class. He wasn't particularly great at all. I mean, he literally came up for halftime. I don't know why um, Vizazo Italiano was thinking, why didn't he start Cabral in this final, which was a stupid decision, in my opinion. Uh, luckily, he came on. And, you know, obviously, I know Jovic did score a disallowed goal, which was kind of harsh, but it was offside. It was the right decision. And like I said, for West Ham, man, they were just clinical. And guys, would you believe it? West Ham is the only club and the per only London club in the Premier League to win a trophy this season. And guys, people are saying that they're bigger than Spurs. I mean, this is a huge L, man. West Ham officially have won more trophies than Spurs in the 2020 decade. That is a new low for Spurs. I'm sorry. That is a new low. And I don't even hate Spurs, but this is this is sad, man. You, you This is just ridiculous. So anyways, um, congratulations to West Ham, man. They're going to be in the Europa League. They're going to be part one for the draw. And, of course, Declan Rice, man. Would this be his final game for West Ham, man? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. All right, now let's go ahead and move on, man. Let's go ahead and move on. Um, let's talk about the best games. There were a lot of good games for the Conference League, guys. There were some games I'd even pick for this category, right? Now, for me, there were a lot of good games. Villarreal 4, Lech Bazan 3. That was a classic on the group stage. I believe that was match day one. Salva and Bacha Sabelli 2 and Basel 2. I picked that one in the second leg. Despite the fact that, um, obviously, Basel, they did overturn the deficit and they won on penalties. Basel won Fiorentina 3. Of course, you have to put that there. Fiorentina making the Conference League final. Mole, George Gunnar was a classic in the group stage. And Fiorentina and Lech Bazan, when we all thought Lech Bazan might have done the impossible. And Fiorentina scored two goals to break their hearts. So, some honor, so there were some other good games you could maybe put. You could maybe put um, West Ham 4, Ghent 1. That comes to mind. Maybe you could also put Villarreal Anderlecht um, if you guys want. Maybe the first leg. Um, I'm trying to think of some other games. Maybe Slovan Basel 2, Slovan Basel with the first leg. You could potentially put maybe Fiorentina 1, Basel 2. You can maybe put... Um, there are some other games that can that comes to the top of my head. I can't think of every game at the top of my head. And so, yeah, man. These were some good games that stood out to me. Best goals. Best goals, man. There were a lot of good goals in the Conference League, man. A lot of good goals. 
Um, for me, this one was amazing. Uh, Mofi's goal again, Mo Mofi goal versus Basil. That was an incredible bicycle kick there. And then Diop goal versus Zalgiris was pretty good. Rice goal versus Gant. The way he was able to control the game, the way he was able to run past the mid midway point of the game, halfway line of the game was insane. Kuami goal was an insane. Immobile goal as well. There were some other great goals, guys. These are all the ones that came up to my head. So, you know, some incredible goals to say the least here. Um, teams that flopped. Let's talk about the teams that underperformed. For me, the team that underperformed the most has to be um, FC Cone. I mean, how do you get bounced in the group stage? With the teams like Nice and Slavia, I'm sorry, Nice and Partizan, right? Now, I understand Nice is a difficult team, but I would still expect you to do better, right? Um, and then obviously Partizan, man, you know, crazy, man. So Conman got at the group stage as a German team. It looks bad for the Bundesliga. And guys, would you believe it? No Bundesliga club has made the round of 32 in the Europa League Conference League. Isn't that crazy, guys? Isn't that crazy? Maybe Frankfurt for can break the curse. <laughs> or maybe Frankfurt will go grouped next season. Who knows? <laughs> next up is Villarreal. Villarreal, man, they underperformed. I mean, they lost in the round of 16 to Anderlecht. With all due respect to Anderlecht, a club that did amazing in the competition, they weren't even that great in the Belgian League. You know? And the fact that you lose to them at home is really saying something. You know? Shout out to Andrew Lecto. Shout out to their goalkeeper, Verbergen. I think that's his name. He was amazing. A top keeper, guys. Maybe he might leave Andrew Lecto this summer. Who knows? But yeah. And the Nice, obviously, man. I mean, you guys are just disappointed. I mean, you were literally... You had the home game in your field. You were 1-0 up in aggregate. You had the home field advantage. All you need to do is to just score a second goal or just hold on to penalties. And the fact you lose an extra time to Basel, I'm sorry, it's a disgrace. And Nice, they were the last French team left in European competitions as well. So, thanks a lot, Nice. That was not very nice. <laughs> I know, it was a bad joke, bad joke. But yeah, it is what it is. Nice, underperformed, uh, of course. Overperformed. I mean, Basel, man. Shout out to Basel, man. The fact that they came second place in the group, and the fact that they actually managed to make the semi-finals, and we're literally a few minutes away from pushing Fiorentina penalties, which they may have won, is incredible, man. Absolutely incredible. Shout out to Basel, man. They were not great in the Swiss League. They have a chance to be in this competition again next season through the playoffs, and I would expect them to do very well because they know how to grind out the results. You know, they beat teams like Nice. They beat teams like Travenspor, and the fact that they, um, uh, what is it called? Who do they beat in the, um, Round, yeah, ba uh, Sylvain Batisabay as well. So they have a habit of getting through. It's called GID, guys. Get it done. That's what this club embodies. <laughs> Next up is Lech Bazan. I mean, they were amazing, man. Got to the well, quarterfinals for the first time as a Polish club. An amazing, amazing achievement. No other Polish club has done that. And European competitions, a shout out to them, man. Ishak, man, these guys were fantastic. And they're like, man, they did amazing. They got to the quarterfinals. They defeated Villarreal, who were one of the favorites for the Conference League. So you have to give them... Their praise, you have to give them the flowers. They overperform massively. Some other teams that also overperform, you can maybe argue, are AZ Alkamar. They overperform. Maybe you can also say Ghent as well. Maybe um, you could also put um, Dirge Gadon potentially. And then uh, flop teams, I didn't say these when I came to flop, but some other teams flopped in this competition, but I didn't put them here because I already put them in the Europa League. For example, Lazio, you could easily put them there. And you could even put like, maybe like you could put like. Um, um, some other teams, but yeah. Anyways, let's talk about the uh, team of the season. So this is the team of the season, guys. This was chosen by UEFA. Um, so let's talk about this. So I decided to go for Ariola. He got the most clean sheets. I believe him and the Lech non goalkeeper got the most clean sheets. I ended up going with him though because obviously he's a better keeper. On uh, the left back, they went with Vergari, and I also agree as well. He got the most assists in the competition, so I think that's fair. Zuma, I actually put on my team. They put Malinkovic. I didn't really agree with that in my opinion. So I decided to put Malink, uh, Zuma there. And then Agored, you have to put Agored. He was fantastic. The UEFA agree with me. And then for right back, they put Nidua. I decided to put Dodo because I thought Dodo was fantastic. He was a very good, very good as a right back for Fiorentina. was very, very good for them. Good purchase from Shakhtar Donetsk. And yeah. And it was CDM. Obviously, it's going to be Declan Rice. They put Rice in their midfield. And then I put Diof. I thought Diof was fantastic. Um, you know, one of Basel's best players in the competition. The guy is fantastic. Very, very young as well. Got the young player of the season award, I believe, as well. And then they, we, I put Ren Nenders. I think he was very, very good for AZ Alcamo, one of their best players. Very, very good player. They put Paqueta down, which is fair. I didn't go for Paqueta simp, um, because I didn't really think um, 
I wanted to diversify this 11 as well. And plus, I feel like Randers was better. So that goal he scored against West Ham was great in the first leg. Then Gonzalez, I put the left wing there. They put Jared Bowen, which is understandable. They put Gonzalez right wing, though. I put Jared Bowen on the right. And then I put Cabal. You have to put the top score in this. And yeah, so let me actually check real quick, guys. Who got the most assist in the conference league? I believe it might have been... It might have been uh, Bergari, actually. It may have been him. Let me check, actually. Standings. Um, let me actually check, check, check for you guys. Let me just fact check this real quick. Just just want to make sure I'm getting my facts right before I <laughs> present to you guys. Um, it would look bad if I don't get the stats right. So, Kwame actually got the most assist. And Bergari. So, they actually tied. Okay. And yeah, most clean, top goal scorer is uh, Amaduni. He also got seven goals. I didn't put him in there. Um, and then, obviously, um, Ariola got the most clean sheets, I believe. So, yep, yep. Okay. So, um, yeah. Anyways, and the manager, obviously, David Moyes. You have to say David Moyes. All right. And now we have the quiz. It is time for the quiz, guys. So, let me know your um, predictions uh, for the quiz and how many can you, how many did you get correct. I'm going to personally say I hope I can get like at least like half of them right. So, let me go ahead and share my screen right here. So, let me go ahead and hopefully we don't get any copyright here. Okay. So, what's going to do is Wednesday, June 7th. So, this has been like a week later, I guess. So, take the test. Okay, let's go and do this. Who are the top 22, 2023 top scores of seven goals apiece? That was Cabral and Amadini. I just shared, told you guys. Okay. How many wins did Champions West Ham record in their 15 Conference League games? Oh, yeah. They actually went They won. I think they they won um, almost all their games. I think they only tied one game. Yeah, they only tied one game to Ghent, which is really impressive. They were the only club to go unbeaten in their respective competition. Actually, Man City also went unbeaten as well. We'll discuss about them next time. Uh, what minute was on the clock when Anton Barak struck, struck Fiorentina as my final winner? I believe it was the 120th minute. Oh, 130! Wow! Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because they had added time in the game. Uh, whatever. How long did it take against or oh, give Orban to score his hat trick? He's number best trick in the last sixteen. Oh yeah, this was the like, fastest hat trick. I uh, fastest hat trick in the uh, conference league. I believe it was like four minutes. I don't exactly uh, three minutes twenty five seconds. Dang. Who in 2020, 2023 became the oldest player in future in the Europa Conference League? Um, I don't even know. I'm gonna go with Pepe Reina. That's the only player I recognize. And yep, I was correct. How many penalties did Ludogorets convert the shootout defeat by Anderlecht? Uh, I believe it was one. Zero? Guys, I don't know what to say to that. Oh my god. What team recorded two 5 no wins group stage but failed to make the knockouts? <laughs> That's actually sad. Imagine winning 5 nil games and you still can't make it out. Okay, obviously George Gunnar made it out, so it can't be them. Uh, it could be Silkborg. Although I don't think it's them. Mold, I don't think it's Mold. It might be it might be Silkborg actually, guys. I'm gonna go with them actually. Yes, it was actually them. It was actually them. <laughs> Ooh, which is the only country to supply two group winners. Okay. Spain only had Villarreal. So it can't be Spain. Ukraine, no. Turkey. It might be Turkey, guys, because Bashak Shakir. And Sivispor. Yep, I think it's Turkey. Yep, it's Turkey. Got it, got it. Which nation made their debut in the group stage of men's UEFA club competition? I believe it is... Is it all of them? It might be all. Or is it Lichtenstein? I think it's Lichtenstein, guys. I think it's Lichtenstein. Oh, it was all. It was all. Yeah, I should have just gone with that. Who, who, who became the first club to win all win all six games UEFA conference league? That was... Uh, West Ham. Yep, West Ham. So we got 6 out of 10. I mean, that's 60%. That's decent, I guess. So yeah, I want to know what you guys did in the quiz below, man. So that was a really pretty fun quiz. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this Conference League review, guys. Let me know what you guys think. Oh yeah, but before I head off, guys, let me rate this Conference League. I'm going to give this Conference League... I would say probably an 8 out of 10. I thought it was pretty entertaining. We had a good semifinals. I think the final was good as well. Quarterfinals... I will say I would have liked more upsets, like maybe if we had a more unique final. The final was good, don't get me wrong, but I would have preferred maybe seeing like more unexpected clubs make it. So 
maybe I might have to tone it down a bit. But, you know, overall, this competition was pretty solid. I really enjoy this conference league. So, I hope you guys did enjoy. Remember, guys, to let me know your thoughts and comments below, guys. And stay tuned, guys. There will be a Champions League review coming out in the next few days. So, I hope you guys did enjoy. Remember, guys, to like and subscribe. And, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Peace out.